Good morning, good morning, good morning, people. So, as you can see, changes are afoot. I actually started hacking the garden down. Did this at the beginning of the week and paid for it. Unfortunately, um, what day did I do it? Monday. Um, as you know, I've been wanting to do it anyway. But we've got a bit of a problem. So at the weekend, Saturday, I'd gone over to see Andy and Becky. And I got a phone call from May telling me that somebody had been knocking on the door. Hello, birdie. Hello, little birdie. Hello. Hello, baby birdie. Hello, birdie. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. Mm hmm. Um, described the person, described the car. Well, I have no idea who it is. Left here, that. <laughs> Following day, I were at my mum's. Person came back. Um, on the Saturday, Nathan had missed him. He, he only saw, saw him walking down the walking back to his car, you see. On the Sunday, he actually answered the door to him. And it was the person that lives in the house at the back. Up there. If you see through the trees where that breeze block garage is, um, behind the hawthorn tree, ask him permission to cut the hawthorn tree down. So thankfully Nathan said nope. I really don't think my mum would uh, would want you to do that. So the gentleman said, well what about just trimming it? And he said, well I think she'd be okay with that, but obviously, you know, you best speak to her first. So anyway he rang me. Um so on my way back, figured out, obviously I'd figured out which house it was, called in, thanked him for at least having the decency to come and ask. As it turns out, the guy's actually really nice, you know, really sound guys. Um, and what it is, he's got like, um, A hut, shall we say, a shed, and he's got a hot tub in it, and the hawthorn is kind of really growing over it, and there's some ivy that grows around the hawthorn, and the ivy is really growing through the hut, so it really is impacting on his land. Um, And I made it clear that I do not want it taken down. Um, said obviously that I have a bit of an affinity with trees. Um, when I said no, that's fine. You've got to be right about these things. He said I'll get in touch with the tree surgeon and. You know, we'll take it from there. I said, okay, fair enough. Didn't expect it to be like immediately. Because um, obviously they'd have to come through here for access anyway, so. Because Monday were an half decent day, I thought, right, I'll get cracked on because my knee's feeling a bit better. 
And as I say, I want to get cracked on my garden anyway, so I uh, made a start on this. And they, they came round, well, I'd, I'd, I'd done a couple of hours out here and that were enough. I went, my hands were absolutely killing me. Um, my back were killing me, everything, well, anyway, yeah. So, and I'd ended up falling asleep on some, they came around about tea time. And straight away, the tree surgeon were just like, why don't you just chop it down and we'll, you know, our thorns are horrible, but we'll put another tree in place for you. You know, we'll put something nice in there. And guy were like, you know, we'll put whatever you want in. The, the guy that lives up there said, we'll put something nice in, whatever you want. You know, I said, a, 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 an apple tree or, you know, an acer or... He were being sound about it, the tree surgeon would have been a bit of a knob. And I just went, no, I don't want it cutting down. So I've already said that. And then the tree surgeon was like, yeah, well, you know, if, if, if you just have it cut down, there's going to be... It's going to have a growth spurt anyway, and this, that, and other, and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Oh, I really don't like Arthur and some blah. And I said, well, you know, by all means, go up and have a look, so I'll just get my shoes on and I'll come up with you. And... Oh, well, all this is going to have to be taken down. I said, yeah, I know it is. I said, look, I said, you know, I'd, I'd already explained to the guy up at the top, obviously, that I've got my own difficulties, and I'd, well, I'd, I'd had to walk a little way from the car into his garden anyway, so I'd walked in one mistake. Obviously, it's none of his business what my situation is, but, you know, I wanted to be right with guy, so I'd explained a little bit why the garden were like it is. I know I don't have to explain my business to anyone, but I just... It's just me. I do. <laughs> Kind of, I don't know, I always feel I have to explain myself to everyone. I always feel like I'm being judged. I've always kind of felt that way. Anyway, and then it was like, well, you'll have to maintain it and blah, blah, blah. And the guy up back said, look, you know, it'll be no cost to you. We'll, you know, we'll do it all. And I just thought, what am I going to do? I really don't know what to do problem I've got is this is a council property and I don't want things to get nasty and part of your tenancy as a council tenant is you are supposed to maintain your gardens and you are not supposed to let your gardens get overgrown and obviously look at the bloody state of this and you are not supposed to let your gardens encroach on your neighbour's gardens. And obviously he's a private tenant. He's a private house owner. And we kind of left it that the tree was going to be trimmed. But then I would have to maintain it every couple of years. Wow. I can't afford to maintain it. I can't afford to have somebody come out every couple of years and maintain it because I won't be able to do it myself. And if I even attempted to do it myself, what if I'm in one of those situations where I'm bedridden? Because I do have months where I'm bedridden for months at a time. So I have already spoken to the tree and I explained to the tree that obviously it's out of my hands. Both emotionally and my, I suppose from a legal standpoint. So, after having a chat with A and a few tears, I went round and I said, look, you know, I have to think practically. I aren't going to be able to maintain it because I did make it clear that if it were up to me, I would have just left it. I just left it to grow. I mean, obviously, yeah, it has grown since I moved in. I've been here eight years now and, yeah, she has got bigger. But 
And I just said to him, look, you know, I said, the thing is, Sorry, Dela. What's this thing is with our thorns? I says, I don't know if you know anything about, you know, spirituality of trees and everything. I said, but chopping our thorns down, I says, is bad juju. He says, no, he says, I didn't know that. He says, uh, he says I come from a farming background. This isn't, you know, it's just farmers having regularly have them round the hedges, this is and they just lob them down every year. I says, yeah, I says, they might cut them down, I says, but there's a difference in trimming them. I says, and to taking them down completely. Says, and you've got to think, with farmers, they're looking after animals and tending the land. But is that given take with farmers, isn't there? But then he did say to me, he'd quoted him 900 quid. So I think you're a little shocked at price. But then, there's not only that, while they were here, I were asking him about these trees, because um, I wasn't sure what they were, because I, I'd not planted them. And I just assumed that the guy who lived here before me had planted them. Um, and when Andy and Becky came over, they weren't 100 percent sure what they were either. And apparently which is even more bad news. Because these are self-seeding. So these seeds from these will have just wafted in. Or birds will have dropped them from somewhere. And these buggers are fast growing and can grow to 120 foot. And poplars are well known for doing major damage with their roots to houses and drainage and stuff. <sighs> so these are gonna have to come out and all. So it's like, oh, for far, far, far sake, so I think I might leave that one up there. I think that one should be all right. I think that's far enough away. But these three are gonna have to come out. So as you can imagine, he's not a happy bunny. But with regard to the Hawthorne, What we agreed on was that it would be replaced with an apple tree. So he said he had um, a couple of mates in business. So we we're going to try and get hold of them and see if he could get some quotes off them. Because apparently that bloke had told him it'd be... Uh, Four lads and a full day's job, which I can understand. She's a big girl. I mean, just let me come out here and I'll show you. Oops. Which way? Oh, I should have gone all the way around just a minute. Say that one. I might leave that one in. 
that's nice and straight. Um, I don't know, I don't know what to do. Because if that is going to end up at 120 foot, the hell am I going to do with that? Oh, I just don't know. These buggers are all over the place anyway. I was thinking there was some sort of fruit tree, but when I've been reading up online and looking at the leaves and everything, the leaves, well, yeah, they are poplars. You can just tell. You're seeing all them there. When I first moved in, they weren't even trees. They were just they were just bushes. Looks like there's a looks like there could be a rowan in there. So I mean, turns out a lot of these trees are self seeding. I didn't know, you see I never I, I didn't know anything about trees. But I can I do now. Um, I'm learning, so oh, but look at all this. Look at all this. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. You know, my biggest worry, obviously, is my birdies. Because of all birdies I get, where my birdies gonna go? I mean, I know I've still got my Dela, my beautiful Dela. She's not going anywhere. Just don't know what to do. There's not what I can do. Like I say, it's out of my hands. And especially now, with these stupid rules that, you know, Councils can demolish your house because of COVID-19. Oh! I, oh, oh, flipping heck. I'm having a bit of a mare here. Uh, I've had to put some new lights up. Obviously, you can't tell, but... Um, Yeah, so you know these lights, this type of lights. Well, the set that were around here had stopped working. It took me ages to figure out what on earth were wrong because none of the wire was broken. But then I discovered one of these on the floor. Somebody had literally bitten one off. I'm like, oh, okay. So when I went to get some more, they had these ones. And I thought, ah. These might be better, obviously, because they're flat, more flat to the tree. These copper ones. So I've got these. Obviously, they're only plain, they're only plain white, but they do actually look really nice when they're on. So when I put them up, I took all my bits and bobs off. Uh, and I've rearranged a couple of stuff. I've moved the, the water thingy, the bird bath, over there, and I've just soaked myself as I was moving back through but yeah um, obviously they've got this new flipping rule that they can literally demolish your house because of Covid so <sighs> they'll literally be looking for any excuse and I don't <laughs> just, you know what they're like Where the way they're acting these days, <clears throat> it won't take them much to come out to come up with an excuse, will it? I don't know. So yeah, I've got a bit of a crappy one going on, guys, at the minute. But I'm going to continue with the garden and just. Well, it'll be what it'll be. Que sera, sera. 
that's all I can say. Anyway, on a lighter note, um, fingers crossed I'll be doing a live stream tonight about grounding again. But it should be an interesting one. So, yeah. I'll put a post up and I'll see you tonight at usual time of 8.30. So take care guys and I'll see you tonight. Have a nice day. Get plenty of fluids in because it's going to be scotchy yo. Love you all. Bye bye.